On today's episode, new nuclear breaks ground and Ford, Argo and Lyft team up for self-driving. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. With increasing pressure from climate scientists, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and concerned governments worldwide, nuclear energy is enjoying a surge in interest not seen in decades. Fusion power, of course, is the holy grail, but most experts agree that large-scale decarbonization of electricity generation will require a bridge technology to span the decades until commercial fusion is ready. Several novel fission reactor designs are under development as our conventional fission plants scale down as small modular reactors. But the government of China is about to build the first of a commercial fission technology that promises most of the upsides of nuclear with few of the disadvantages, thorium-powered molten salt reactors. Now, the concept has been around since the late 1940s, and experiments have been performed on a small scale since the 1950s, but thorium-fueled fission reactors had an insurmountable problem. They're useless for producing weapons-grade plutonium, which in the 1950s was the primary task of US and Soviet reactor research, along with ship propulsion. Of course, for civilian use, a reactor design that can't be used for atomic weapons is a major plus, and there's an added benefit to thorium. High-level radioactive waste with a half-life of 500 years, far more manageable than the waste produced by current uranium fuel technology. And thorium is relatively abundant worldwide. The fuel is a major part of this technology, but so is the reactor design itself. Molten salt designs dispense with the traditional reactor core with its fuel rods, control rods, and mechanical systems to operate them. While the exact layout of the Chinese reactor has not been disclosed, the nation's nuclear research program has suggested that a novel single-loop molten salt design with the thorium fuel dissolved in the liquid metal primary loop would be low cost, operate at atmospheric pressure, burn up bread plutonium for better energy efficiency, and have negative temperature and void coefficients, making them intrinsically safe with simple mechanical systems. From a commercial perspective, a major factor is the ability to operate without large quantities of cooling water, making small molten salt reactors ideal for remote power or process heat generation. Now, the Chinese government expects that the first commercial reactor will be complete in 2030, and that several will be deployed in the plains of central and western China. Beijing has also suggested that the technology might be deployed in nations participating in China's Belt and Road Initiative. With one atmosphere operating pressures, a simplified heat exchange system, and an intrinsically safe physics package, the technology would seem to be perfect for a scalable, deployable clean energy system. One significant technical challenge remains, however, corrosion. The molten salts are hot and reactive, and to address this, multiple nations are researching advanced materials. Without water as a moderator, hydrogen embrittlement won't be a factor, although beyond alloy composition, long-term durability of welded joints, pumps, and seals is still under research. The materials problem appears to be well in hand, and the Chinese are reporting promising results with the commercially available superalloy, Hastelloy N. Molten salt reactors are under development worldwide, and in the US, the Tennessee Valley Authority and Kairos Power will demonstrate a 50 thermal megawatt molten salt test reactor at the TVA's Oak Ridge facility, with an eye toward commercial deployment of a 140 megawatt electrical plant. Times for completion have not been announced. The road to nuclear fusion may run through molten salt. <laughs> If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. The automotive industry is changing faster now than at any time in the last century, and that change is happening on two fronts, electric propulsion and autonomous driving. Now, both sectors have been characterized by a large number of small-scale startups, multiple different technologies under development, and then an eventual shakeout, leaving fewer, more viable companies. Ride-hailing major Lyft, for example, recently sold their self-driving technology division, called Level 5, to Toyota, and has inked a deal with Motional, a joint venture which includes Hyundai, to develop fully autonomous cars in the Lyft network in 2023. But Lyft is not leaving the autonomous driving space, as Ford Motor Company announced a new deal with Argo AI and Lyft to commercialize autonomous ride-hailing services at large scale. The deal brings together the three core components of a successful commercial autonomous taxi service, motor vehicles, self-driving systems, and a system to order the service and process payments. The group plans to deploy vehicles rapidly, starting with passenger rides in Miami later this year and Austin, Texas in 2022. Initially, the vehicles will carry safety drivers, and Lyft users inside the defined service areas will hail vehicles by choosing a self-driving car on the app. At this point, the group plans to deploy approximately 1,000 autonomous vehicles on the Lyft network over the next five years in multiple markets. Lyft software is mature, and their systems are already in place. And of course, Ford has over a century of auto production experience. So the question is Argo's contribution. 
As part of the deal, Argo will have access to anonymized service and fleet data from Lyft, allowing the company to more rapidly develop code and deal with the major limitation on current AI self-driving systems, edge cases. For its part, Lyft will receive 2.5% of the common equity of Argo AI as part of a licensing and data access agreement. Ford is establishing centers in Miami, Austin, and Washington, D.C. to support the vehicles, including fueling, servicing, and cleaning. Collaborations between software companies and automakers are not new, but the critical takeaway from this deal is that Lyft is monetizing the data collected by their large fleet of vehicles. Testing is always a major problem when developing safety-critical systems, something that Tesla has addressed by uploading user data from their customers' electric cars. In theory, this should remove a major obstacle for Argo AI, who can combine simulation with large-scale, real-world testing. For Ford, it establishes a market for turnkey taxi vehicle services, allowing companies like Lyft to offer services without developing expensive hardware infrastructure. With urban self-driving systems now carrying passengers in the U.S. and China, to date there appears to be widespread consumer acceptance of this technology. It seems clear that self-driving will begin in geofenced, urban, and suburban areas before moving nationwide. We'll report again when the service is up and running. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>